Hi, this is Michael Kennedy from Developmentor, and we're going to talk about ASP.NET MVC. In this short screencast, we're going to look at the MVC project file structure. Unlike other web platforms, MVC has very strict guidelines about where you place different uh, elements of your website. For example, your models go into a particular model folder and your views go into a particular directory uh, substructure under a views folder and your controllers go into a controllers folder. And there's more, more to it than that. So you have to understand this file structure in order to get started with ASP.NET MVC because if you don't and you put the controllers in the wrong place or the views in the wrong place, things like that, uh, they might not work as expected. So we'll switch over to Visual Studio and just have a quick look. So here we are, Visual Studio 2012. We're going to create a new project, and we're going to create a MVC4 application. So when we create a new MVC4 application, we're actually presented with a choice of six sub-project uh, types that we can choose. And the reason I'm pausing here is because the depending on which one of these you choose, you'll get a different file structure. They're all sort of basically the same, but if you pick internet application, you'll get different files and folders created than if you pick mobile, than if you pick basic, and so on. So let's go ahead and get started with the most typical one, which you'll probably create is just an internet application. And if we also chose to create a unit testing project, that would create another uh, project in our solution. But let's just skip that for now. All right, it takes just a moment for it to get everything started. You can see it's adding a bunch of references from NuGet down here, and so that takes it just a second. There's actually quite a few files being created here. It's just about done. Okay, over on the right, we have a bunch of folders, and it's taking us to the home controller, which you may be familiar with. But what we want to look at is what's over here in the Solution Explorer. So let me zoom in for you and just go down the line. App data, this has been in ASP.NET MVC forever. It doesn't have special meaning, uh, excuse me, it's been in ASP.NET forever. It doesn't have special meaning in the MVC projects. It's the same as before. App start, this uh, runs code that will help configure our ASP.NET application. Uh, generally, we don't mess with this too much, but it's put here by the system. For example, the routing is configured here. Um, the bundling, which has to do with uh, minification of JavaScripts and CSS, uh, web API config, all that stuff is in here. Uh, and if you need to customize it, uh, you go in here and change these classes. The most common place I suspect you'll be going is to the route config to make custom routes. Okay, then the next thing we have is content, and content is kind of open-ended in the MVC world, but content means things like CSS files, and uh, here we have themes. These are the jQuery UI themes, which actually uh, contain images and CSS files. But uh, typically, you know, you'll have your CSS file here, and you'll add your styles for your site and, and whatnot. So this is all pretty good. And then we get to the heart of the MVC pieces, model view controllers. So the controllers always go into the controllers folder. And uh, the MVC projects have a little bit of um, a UI to help you get this right. So you right click and you can say um, add, and it'll choose over here a new controller. And when you choose controller, you'll see the ones that exist here are account controller, home controller, and so on. They need to be named that in order to work correctly. So the MVC project, when you say add new controller, sort of helps you by selecting only the part of the controller uh, that you're supposed to edit, like uh, products or whatever you're after, right? Okay, so let's cancel out of that. Okay, so that's the controllers folder. It's pretty much a flat set of, of classes in there that are your controllers. Uh, let's stick to the MVC part for a minute. So V, uh, v stands for views. Now, these two folders are tied together. If we have a controller called home controller, then we have a folder called home in the views folder. If we have a controller called account controller, then we have an account, not account controller, just account folder. And in here we have a bunch of CSHTML files. Let's just stick to the home one because that's simpler. Okay, so we have three uh, files in here, index, contact, and about. And if we go and actually look at this guy, we can see that there's an index, there's an about, and there's a contact action method. So you can see the home controller, 
uh, maps down to the views folder, home subfolder, and then the action methods by default map to the actual files in the home folder. Okay. Similarly, if we went and looked at the account, you can bet there's a login, a manage, a register method, and all those sorts of things. Now, these don't have to be tied together, but in MVC, 90, 95% of the time they are. And you'll find a few other things in this views folder here that are interesting. You'll find a shared folder, and this is very important. Um, you may have heard of master pages previously from ASP.NET. Um, MVC uses the similar concept, but they call them layouts. And these defines a common look and feel for your application. Uh, anything that every single web page or every single view needs access to goes in here. So if there's an error, we need to be able to show the error view. If there's a layout, all the pages need access to the layout. And finally, uh, there's a login option that uh, appears all over the place. So that's also here. Okay, so you'll be adding things that uh, little partial views and controls that you want to use across views into this shared folder. And then we also have a web config. Typically, you don't mess with that too much, but uh, that, that sets up uh, special um, uh, assemblies and namespaces and whatnot for the, the views. And then we have this thing called view start, which is typically pretty simple. And what that does is that selects the default layout for the pages, the views, if you don't pick anything. So all that is contained in the views folder there. And of course, you wouldn't have a great internet application without a fav icon, so we've got that. Global ASAX. Just you know, same as before, this is sort of the registration, a lifetime management for your application, web config, right? That's the configuration settings for your app. And then packages.config, that comes from NuGet, and you typically don't man edit, edit this ma uh, manually. You just interact with NuGet via right-clicking manage NuGet packages, and that's just sort of something there for NuGet to keep track of things with. Okay, and we skipped over a few of these, so let's come back to them. We skipped over models. Now, models is um, an interesting folder. A whole concept of model view controller makes great sense. Separating your logic into you know, just business stuff that doesn't have to do with the web and, and UI and whatnot is a really good idea. Um, whether or not you put a whole bunch of classes into this model folder or you add other libraries that are more rich, uh, domain model type libraries is sort of up to you, but typically what I see is, you know, uh, a few sort of webby type models go here, but a lot of times people will have a separate project for like entity framework uh, pieces and they'll have repositories and so on. So this models folder is not used all as much as you might think it would be, but anyway, it's in here. And then we have images. Uh, images are great because, you know, you want to have images in your website and keeping them isolated by themselves is good. And then filters, this is uh, stuff that runs at startup. Uh, some of this uh, filter config stuff here from App Start, like this sets up a membership, the membership provider with a simple database and creates a database and things like that. And then the last one here is scripts. And this uh, is your JavaScript scripts. And you have a bunch of files like it comes with jQuery, comes with knockout, um, modernizer, if I scroll down, there's modernizer, and so on. So uh, you could put your own JavaScript files here if you'd like. And so that's the ASP.NET MVC uh, 4 file structure, and it hasn't changed that much, but there's a few additions from the previous version. Now, I do have a few recommendations for you. When you get started, um, you'll find that life will be easier for you over time if you create a few other folders. So let me just add them here to show you what I'm talking about. So let me say add a new folder. And the first one I'm going to call is view models. Now we talked about the models folder and how it's kind of sort of useful. Um, but a lot of times you'll find the models somewhere else. And uh, what you do find yourself creating a lot of are these things called view models that are strictly tied to the actual view that they're they're trying to display. So you've got a, a maybe a table of customers and some paging control. There's a bunch of information about those things that needs to be tied to that view and passed along. So I, I like to create a separate view models folder just to keep it really clear in my mind. Some people rename the models folder to that. Some of some people don't do this at all. So this is what I do. The other thing which uh, you might want to do is if you look in the scripts folder, you'll see there's a bunch of sort of pre-existing open source libraries. Now, if you're going to have a bunch of JavaScript files for your project, if you throw them in here, well, they're just going to get lost, all right, lost in the, the fray there. So what I would do is actually go and add another new folder, folder and call it uh, 
and say JavaScript or JS or something like that and put your JavaScript files in there. So that way it's very clear what your JavaScript files are and the other ones that you sort of just reference for your site right, externally. So you don't want to get those mixed up otherwise you'll, you know, it's just a little bit harder to navigate. And there you have it. I guess since we went and created this whole project, we should probably go ahead and run it, see what it looks like, so you guys can see it. And yeah, that's a little small, isn't it? So here we go. Give it a moment to come up, and there is your new home page, your MVC4 project. Goes to the home controller, which you don't really see because of the routing, and it goes to the index method, and we come up with this. If we go to the about, we get stuff with the about. Go to contact, stuff with the contact. First it goes to the home controller, then it picks the right view, goes down through that view folder, which we all saw down here, right? So now you have it. Um, thanks for your time. Hope it was useful.